from past kings. I can take whatever I want from the people as long as I give them something to distract them. James steps up and tells them, as your benevolent king, I'm going to give you something you've never had before. I'm going to give you religious liberty. I will issue a decree that says you no longer have to be a member of the Church of England. You can have church anywhere you want, anytime you want, with any pastor you want. Preach anything you want, and the government will not persecute you or prosecute you on one condition. First, you must inform the king where you'll be meeting, when you'll be meeting, who will be preaching, what will be said, and you must promise that you will never, ever say anything bad about the king in church. Does that sound like religious liberty? How many of you think that sounds like a 501c3? They're practically identical. And since they're identical, what's the difference between 1688 and 2016? Well, the difference is, in 1688, the bishops stood up to the king. And they said, we have a promise over 500 years old that says the government has no business in our church. So guess what? We're going to preach whatever we want, and we're still not going to follow your decree. Charles, I'm sorry, James arrests seven bishops. He throws them in prison and charges them with a the crime of seditious libel. That was the part of the decree you can't talk bad about the king. Now, Char James has learned from Charles, you've got to give them their day in court or they'll chop off your head. So James makes sure these seven bishops get their day in court. But he has nothing to fear, because you see, the crime of seditious libel says, truth is no defense. <laughs> so when you're talking bad about the king, even if you're right, you still have to die. These seven bishops got their day in court. Two of them were acquitted because they had judges who refused to enforce an unconstitutional decree. The other five were also acquitted because they had a jury of their peers who refused to find them guilty of an unconstitutional law. William Penn. We did not invent the right to a trial by jury, nor did we invent the essential check and balance of jury nullification. We inherited them. A rebellion comes against James called the Glorious Revolution of 1689. They called it the Glorious Revolution because they said hardly a shot was fired. James got so scared they were going to chop off his head like they did Charles. He got on his horse and fled the entire kingdom. But from this rebellion, we get the English Bill of Rights of 1689. Whereas the late King James II, by the assistance of evil judges, counselors, and ministers employed by him, did endeavor to subvert and extirpate the laws and liberties of our kingdom. Now I'll just confess to you, I did not know what extirpate meant. So I looked it up. Extirpate means to completely destroy. Let me ask you a simple question. If you completely destroy something, is there anything left? No, because then it would be partially destroyed or mostly destroyed. We're talking completely, not even a speck. And they said what James II was doing was completely destroying their liberty. And they made a whole list. Now, we're not going to go over the whole list, but I want to share one with you. But first, I want to ask you a question. How many of you have seen the history of this past repeating today? Just a little bit? A lot. We didn't invent tyranny, and we didn't invent liberty. We were just repeating the mistakes we were supposed to avoid through the wisdom of our fathers. I want to show you one more. They said that James II was completely destroying liberty by writing law, overturning law, and setting aside law when that was a power reserved to Parliament alone. They said if the executive branch is writing law, over 
overturning law and setting aside law when that is a power reserved to the legislative branch, it is the complete destruction of liberty. You see, we didn't invent separation of powers. They had separation of powers in 1688. They had an executive branch and the king, a limited government, a, a legislative branch in parliament, and a judicial branch. Separation of powers says that powers cannot be shared and they cannot be stolen. How is it that a people in 1688, with no Google Oracle, no internet, no CNN, no MSNBC, no Fox News, knew that the executive orders were always the complete destruction of liberty? And today we do nothing.